the regular Dasani water can suck it. I hate it. It's garbage. <laughs> Everybody getting home now? <laughs> yeah, that's the one. And when scheduling this, I was like, oh, what's the problem? It'll be good. And then I remembered, oh, yeah, everybody comes home from school and uh, Oh, stuff. no, right at that. Okay. I'm, but, I'm, I'm also hyper flexible right now, so I don't have anything going on. Yeah. Oh, we okay. got to stop. We got to stop. It's no, no, fine. It's, the only thing that might happen is uh, noise banging on the door or something or balls being kicked against the door. <laughs> got it. You know, balls on the door. I, let's see, one, I have... I have two live cats in this room right now too. So right now, right now they're just laying down, but there's the potential for them to, to be up and around every time though. They, every time they come in though, um, they, they want to jump on my lap and I'm not on a, I'm not on a chair chair. This is maybe this is a workflow that we can eventually get into, yeah. but I'm not on a chair chair. I'm on a, a big 75 centimeter no, not centimeter. That'd be weight. Would that be big or small? Small. That's small. Small. That's small. Yeah. How small? Centimeters in uh, 75, 75 centimeters in inches is 29 inches. So two feet and a bit. Okay. I think it's, I think it's bigger than that. Let's, let's say it's bigger than that. Uh, 75 inches sounds, sounds reasonable. Let's go with that for now. 75 inch yoga ball. And I'm sitting on, oh. I'm sitting on that. And so it's, it, it's kind of like a big kickball, you know, yeah. um, like so it would kind of, yeah, want to play with it. yes, they, they, they think they can use it as leverage to jump on your lap and be with you when in fact right. a single nail to the, uh, to the ball would, would deflate it. And it's happened before, unfortunately. <laughs> While you're recording a podcast, <laughs> not no, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> but Where'd go? I would keep I would keep that audio, and I would I have one of those floaty arm th things here, so that I would be okay. I'd, I could be on the floor, and it'd be fine. Your uh, your desk setup strikes me as being, and I've seen pictures, but it, it strikes me as a lo having a lot of things that are in air quotes, like an air quotes chair, and an air yeah, air quotes arm stand, and an air quotes table. It was it was an air quotes table for a little while. I took it out. Um, I was in the closet for the longest time, um, mainly to just shut out the cats and to and to be able to add all this acoustic foam stuff to the walls. So, so that I would, have a question. Yeah, I'm just yeah, interrupt yeah, you for a yeah. Second. Yeah, there's a question. I'm, well, there's many questions, but the one main one is: you, as the human, uh, own a house or apartment or something? Right? Apartment, yeah. Apartment, rent, apartment, rent, apartment. Uh, pay pay human money for that. And as the human who pays the money for the rent for the apartments, you are obligated to hide in a closet from two cats. Is that correct? Is that my understanding of the situation? Well, uh, le legally, it would be one cat. Um, if we're talking about my, <laughs> my actual, uh, what is represented in the lease agreement. Yes, Chris, I have one cat. Um, so the, the fear two cats. Yes, two cats? Do, yes, exactly. I, I would say the the second questions. and the second, third, and fourth cat are definitely figments of my imagination. <laughs> they do not actually exist. Um, I no, it's not about fear. I guess it's more like um, it's for the enjoyment of the listeners. You know, like I want right. I want to make sure that that they have the the most crisp, dead, clear sound of of my voice that they possibly can. And now, actually, as I say this. One of them is about to yelp out that they want the door opened. He, crisp, this crisp one, dead sound. Yeah, yeah th this one, this one is the one that can actually reach the door. So I know you have a couple that that can reach doors and, and open them. So if if that ends up happening, um, yeah. we'll just cut it out. That's fine. Yeah, we'll cut that. Out. The kids, cats, they're both the same. <laughs> <laughs> basically, basically. I drank, I drank out of a, a mug this morning that said cat mom on it. So that's how our house kind of runs. That's how you roll. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what'd you, what'd you get to drink? Just some water? Just some water. Yeah. yeah. Just, it's, it's 4 p.m. It's not, it's I, not quite. <laughs> it's 4 p.m. It's too coffee, too early for beer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, um. I always make a, a run to Costco. You make a run to Costco and you, you're when you're on Twitter and ask people if they need anything. And I, I greatly mm -hmm. appreciate that. 
do you guys, I need to know now since you, since you ask, um, do you guys have any sort of like fruit flavored, uh, sparkling water? Do we like in the house, in the premise, on in, the premises? uh, at, at the Costco or premises in Canada, in, Canada in uh, general, there may be, I'm not, um, I'm under strict, I'm under a bit of a, what would be like a, um, like, you know, you get a restraining order, I guess, to keep someone away from you. I would have maybe a de-straining order. I don't know <laughs> at Costco where I'm only allowed to get things on the list and not look at other things. So I have to quickly bolt past the TVs, Got it. Oh. Past electronics oh. and such things and just stick to the list. Cause I get very easily distracted. And then suddenly the card is full of 16 boxes of the same piece of Lego. Bond. And yeah. And bread. So, and, and bread yes. and and snacks, big bags of snacks as tall as your children. And yeah, we, I, that, I deviated from the list yesterday. I was there yesterday. Actually, didn't forget to tweet about it. Um, and got the Chicago popcorn bag. I don't know if you have those in the U.S. there, but the big sort of squishy. It's like a weird textured bag. I don't know. Maybe for for uh, Chicago popcorn, it requires like a a thicker bag or something. But is it like a newspaper? Is it? It feels kind of papery on the outside, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Like how a bag should feel, I guess, but <laughs> it's, it's foreign to me. <laughs> it's, I got you. It's not the, the, the hyper thin, like ruffles, uh, right. Yeah. Bags. Yeah. Stuff that disintegrates and presumably gives everybody cancer. No, no way. There's no way that's disintegrating that, that stays forever. Right. It, no, but in answer to your question, I don't think there is, there's, I'm or sorry. I'm sure there must be, um, bubble water juice. Yeah. Of some sort. Okay. Fizzy stuffs why is there a, a recommendation you have for the listeners uh not off the top of my head. Okay. <laughs> here, here i here i, I thought I am that was leading somewhere <laughs> well no it, well, i have dasani right now which of all the dasani products um sparkling water is their most tolerable version the regular dasani water can suck it i hate it it's garbage it should be evaporated all of it should be sublimated instantly i do not want it at all um, sublimated wow. yeah so you go straight f- you, gr- you go straight from solid form to to gaseous form like it wow. skips it skips the liquid form because it's that bad um i can't remember what the what that version is that they have at costco they have they have the 24 pack of the one that's um a bunch of fruit flavors they they have like five percent juice in them i think for the most part um lemon flavor berry flavor what else <laughs> Uh, cucumber flavor, which is kind of like lotion. It tastes a little like lotion. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, I don't know. That again brings up more questions. I know. I know. All right. So we, let's see, <laughs> let's see what You've we have here. Um, we have notes in a couple places. Should I be looking at the Google doc? I think the, the Google doc is the primary one. The, um, okay. Slack well, is secondary. Okay. Uh, the, the, if you check your fax machine, there's another backup copy there with a few different notes scribbled on it. Um, which you bring up, we, we're, we're hoping to talk about notes and the way that we take notes and the way that we keep notes and the way we pass notes in class, I guess, right? That's sort of the nominal topic for this episode. Yeah. And I guess I should, I should preface all of this with, um, Chris, you and I run and own the good stuff broadcasting network. Um, we you rent it actually. We rent it. <laughs> You're right. We, uh, from two cats. <laughs> we do. We absolutely do. Um, they don't know. We don't know that we have more cats than that, but, but we, I won't tell you, boy, this is getting confusing. Um, the, we have tried so many different collaborative note taking platforms throughout the four years, four year, three years that we've been doing this. Um, and, yeah. and we have yet to really land on a platform that makes sense for, for what we need to do. We're not taking corporate notes for uh, tax purposes or for uh, legal ownership purposes. We've tried that before and it doesn't, it, no, I don't it recommend d- that. didn't, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't work well. It really, really doesn't uh, paper people. That's, that's the best way to go. File it with your, your legislature. Um, this is. <laughs> This is, I think, the one that that has stuck the most um, is just sending one document, one Google Doc with one URL back and forth. That's it. Yeah. And we like, so we both have our our job, day jobs as well. 
that were interactive. I think like framing stuff for me anyways, it's like I have um, my business that I run with clients that I communicate stuff with and sort of need to sometimes need to communicate, you know, uh, collaboratively with them. And sometimes it's just stuff that I keep to myself notes on them. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Do not use this person again or don't anyways. Um, and then there's also my spouse, my wife, and <laughs> I can only hear Kenny now. When I say. Anyways, I have my <laughs> wife and my family that I communicate <laughs> with, keep stuff with sometimes. And then, yeah, like good stuff, stuff. So good stuff with you, good stuff with the various podcasts that we ha- each collab- collectively have, not to None of them collaborative, I guess, right. with each other, but with other people who have their own preferences. And that's where it just gets so messy. Cause if it was just, if it was just me, I would do what I want, obviously. And I wouldn't worry about what anybody else is, but the, each time, especially with a podcast, um, or a client, I'm, you're working with someone with very different, uh, skill levels, text levels or aptitudes or preferences, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. And you sort of, I being the polite Canadian person, um, have to adapt to their needs. Well, and, and you're, wants. you're probably looking for the least friction to get that person up and running on yeah. whatever platform that is. Um, if you need to come to some sort of agreement on the notes, or if it's just like, Hey, this is, we're having a meeting right now. This is where I'm going to be taking it. This is primarily for me, but I'm giving you transparency. Here's a link. If you want to view whatever it is, um, for like client meetings or whatever, uh, yeah, I, I can, I can see that being a determining factor in you trying to decide w- what to stick with, or even whether or not something new is worth trying out that you saw on product hunt or, um, continuing to, to use it and, and base your, your business on it on my side. Um, I guess I don't, I don't necessarily have a, system for the notes that i send out to others i have very few meetings um, and the meetings that i do have are typically daily stand-up style meetings or um presentation meetings so either the notes are pre-formatted beforehand and i'm kind of giving giving them to other people uh verbally so I'm not actually giving them a, a a paper to look at or a presentation to look at. Um, or we're not taking notes, period. So a lot of the collaborative note taking stuff uh, doesn't happen for me. And it's a it's a completely different way that I that I am used to doing stuff um, w- with others. Right, because that's, that's dictated, in a sense, dictated like your employer, obviously. Is, and there's, Correct. You know, I don't know, management or whatever. And people that have established routines or systems for their, the company. Right. And you're kind of like have to adapt to that. Or you could, I guess, I'm, I'm assuming you that they would be open enough to like, if you really said we need to be using this in this scenario, we could use it, but it probably isn't worth trying to push that rock up the hill unless it was really amazing. Well, yeah. Or you're, you're getting integrated into some note taking system that already exists. If they are very verbose with exactly what they need, uh, for either meeting notes or minutes or whatever you call them. Um, yeah, I, I haven't been integrated into a system like that. It's typically whatever I need out of the situation is what I will do for myself. They'll just be notes right. that I access offline or they'll be uh, they'll make their way into a to do list rather than than note taking. Um, and I think what you and I wanted to, to get to today was try, trying to kind of break all each of those down into what we've tried and. Uh, what's stuck, what hasn't stuck, what we have moved between what we've tried on good stuff uh, together and maybe what we've tried separately, uh, business wise. Um, I'll, I'll say over, over the last three years or four years, I guess 2014. So three years now I can do math. It's fine. Try, try, try not doing math on this podcast, please. And leaving, leaving that for myself. Um, I've been using a service called Workflowy that has been sort of the cornerstone for all show notes that we have ever done for, for the other podcast that, that I run, uh, morning show was transmission now is morning show. Um, and that has been the single most sticky thing that, that has worked for me. Um, I've shared a few notes with you in the past and, um, they're nice notes. They're pretty good. 
pretty good, right? There's, right. there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff in there that, that goes towards the way that my brain works. Um, and, and I guess we'll get more into that, but yeah, that, that seems to be the one that has stuck with me. Um, they brand it as kind of like an, an infinite brain kind of tool where it's not really for notes and it's not really for to do's and it's not really for something other than it allows you to put words into a box and then zoom into them as, as far as you'd like them to go. Uh, it's it's kind of like a bulleted system almost, right? It, like it, it is it's sort of heavy on bullets and bullet points and sub bullets. And it would be underneath the, the outlining tools uh, section here on, on the separate document that I sent you outliners. <laughs> it's the funny thing. Our, we were trying to pick topic for the first episode and we, in doing so, we realized we had each, I'd started something in workflow. You'd started something in Slack's posts feature, which is like a whole separate thing. I have something in Apple notes and then we have a Google doc and there's probably other things as well. And so we were like, I think this is definitely the, a good choice for our first topic. Yeah. So I signed up back for Evernote just so we could, we could talk <laughs> yeah. about this. I didn't, I, I promise I didn't. No way. No way am I doing that. Evernote, I think is, yeah, ran itself off a cliff, but, um, I think workflow to me too was I had tried it. I remember you had, for something along the way you'd suggested that we try it, and so I tried it, and it kind of it's a neat like from I, I'm often grabbed by like sort of tech whizzy kind of stuff, and and distracted by that in and even if it doesn't necessarily fit my workflow per se that I actually use stuff for, but if if it has some neat features, then I'll kind of like dive into it full feet with both feet full feet and uh, as they say and. And for Workflow, we actually, it really enabled me on a solo project, a, a thing I've been wanting to do for a long time, which was put together just a course on something. And it happened to be, in that case, Snapchat on how to use it and sort of like how I would put together the course and the video work, videos I needed to make and, and all that kind of stuff. And it really clicked and like, I would, I would all, without hesitation, credit Workflow with enabling me to actually do that thing that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And uh, so you kind of, you, you used it as a brain dumping slash brainstorming tool, I guess, to, to get you going and kind of organize your thoughts in a, in a bulleted like fashion. Cause it does kind of encourage, um, yeah. short information, um, not full sentences. Um, it doesn't have any rich text really other than bold and outline. Um, everything, everything is, is, pretty plain no images nothing and so a lot of the focus i guess um which may help towards brainstorming and stuff is is to just keep it focused on the tasks and the words and the and the things that are floating in your head does that yeah and, accurately and, capture it yeah and the like collapsibleness of it all where like so you can do bullet points and stuff in say google docs or word or whatever and people i'm sure do that all the time like making sort of a list of like step one is this and then so under that is all the things involved in step one and, and on way on down. But the fact that I can collapse stuff, uh, like on step three, I, you know, taking a snap and then I write all the stuff about how to take a snap, but then I can collapse that and then focus on step four, which is like doing the dumb face filter things or whatever. And then within each of those, you can have any, any, um, bullet item can be sort of, uh, whatever it's called scratched off or marked as done too. And so then it allowed me to have a bit of like my workflow in there as well as like, have I recorded a screen flow, like the video capture of it? Have I edited it? Have I uploaded it yet? And sort of check each of those items off for each right. step as well within the thing. And so it wasn't like a master to-do list somewhere else. And then my notes on how to do it here and you know everything all over the place. It was all kind of like in one nice well, in spot. What that, what that top level that you're talking about kind of does for you as well is put it into a table of contents sort of thing where if you're trying to break something down into chapters or uh, trying to digest a lot of information starting from nothing. Um, you can kind of fill it out that way where you're like, okay, here are my big main ideas and bullet those out. And then, like you said, zoom into those and, and write them out. Or you can actually just paste a huge chunk of information that you may be thinking about or wanted to copy from somewhere else and then kind of dissect it that way and bring out major topics above those i think the reordering features of workflow also were kind of one of the major sticking points for me that that made it work 
um, and made it feel more like a mind map, less like a, a note taking tool. Because I've seen a lot about, at least on Mac, there were a lot of mind mapping tools for a long time. You could make them look like a chalkboard. You could make them look like balloons, kind of kind of gimmicky stuff. But what it does is it eliminates the hierarchical uh, structure that that you get with viewing a page vertically and tries to put all of the ideas sort of at the same level. So you're seeing a I guess like a, a subsidiary idea of a main idea next to it. And all of the other balloons that are around that one are considered um, with the, the same weight as, as the rest of them. Um, and I think that workflow, although it is sort of the vertical top to bottom, you're right, like a bulleted list sort of thing. The reordering of those items makes it feel far more, like a brainstorming and mind mapping tool than just like a, a regular bulleted list. Even the, even literally the one you're taking right now on Google docs um, feels very structured. It is, it is exactly what we've talked about so far. It's exact. And I guess maybe we can put a snapshot of this in the show notes, but it's exactly yeah. what we've talked about so far. Um, and it doesn't feel reorderable or like it feels super concrete. Like I don't want this on my tombstone, obviously, but, but maybe, <laughs> maybe on my pizza, maybe on my tombstone pizza. Cause I can spin the pizza around. There's I'm, I'm going to mix all the metaphors, but mix some, yeah. Yeah. I think the, that's exactly it. Like Google docs or any sort of text editor, traditional text editor notes, whatever Apple notes feels like you're always having to copy paste there's no very, like you can highlight and then drag stuff sort of, but some of the formatting comes with it. Some of it doesn't. And just that kind of stuff, it feels kind of heavy. Whereas workflowy um, feels kind of light and easy. It's like, it, it is, like you said, it's, I don't mind map tools never worked for me, even though that should, it's kind of what I described as needing almost, but they, this has just enough structure to allow me to, that's to get that kind of stuff done. That being said, it doesn't stick for me in a lot of other ways where I actually need to take notes for things. I don't use it for like meetings and minutes and client, you know, conversations that I need to remember or, mm-hmm. or podcast stuff that we, I do anyways elsewhere. It kind of just works in this, this one area for me really well. And that's, I think part of what I've realized about myself through all of these kind of trying different notes and stuff is, especially when it comes to just stuff I'm using for myself is being okay with having sort of a single purpose app or, uh, style, I guess, and not having a, like stressing about the fact that some of it's in Google Docs and some of it's in Workflowy and some of it's in Apple Notes. I've kind of relaxed about that. It kind of sucks sometimes when you're like trying to remember where that conversation was kept. Yeah. And which, especially working with someone like you, where we're both kind of that wired that way a bit and we'll happily toss something in one thing <laughs> and then completely forget where it was yeah. <laughs> when it comes yeah. time to actually doing it. Exactly. So, which has been nice is, uh, I've started doing this. And I think you've done this too, is I'll make sure I put like links from one thing to the other thing when I move them from somewhere. So I'll have like, we'll get into this maybe a little later, but like I have some notes in Apple notes that I then moved to Trello. And so in my Apple notes thing for that thing, I actually have like, go here now, Chris, follow this link. Right. Like a, like Trello. a link to the other. Okay. Like a link to yeah. the other document so that you can, you're following a digital paper trail. Of, of sorts. Of, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Of what you, what you should do next. Is it more procedural or is it more like, Hey, if you need to send this to a client, this is where it is. It's, it's actually it's, in the shared Google doc. It's actually like, so for example, daily my other podcast that I do by myself is I used to have like a list of topic ideas that I kept in Apple notes. Cause that's kind of where it was just like, I have my phone. It makes sense. But then I actually wanted to sort of remember more details about each particular topic idea and if I'd done them or not. Uh, and so then I wanted to have like a one list that's like, to do and one list that's like it's done and so that made more sense for me at the time anyways to put that in trello where i could write jot comments and notes about each particular episode idea so now that actually is in trello so in my if i do a search for dailyish in notes um nothing comes up <laughs> Bing. i swear that's what I, yeah i did no, I, I i understand i i i I get where you're going with that. And part of what I'm doing more recently with, um, with morning show is sort of that, um, we have a workflow for getting the notes from the, 
I guess what would be sort of like the the talking script for what we want to get to every episode. Um, and then we'll go from there and need to convert just the links into show notes that we can then put into the CMS and then publish it so that that folks can see exactly what we what we talked about that episode. We don't get to everything all the time, too. So there are syncing issues between what is in the sort of like script for the episode. It's, it's not scripted, but it's it's what we're going to say in the episode to what actually gets posted in the final thing. So right. usually, typically, I'll have a link in there for a service like HackMD or I've, I've had um, just a link to a... Uh, Google document that has the notes either in rich text format or whatever, but it links back to the document. I can update to then put it into um, the good stuff CMS. It's not super efficient and cr creating those two different destinations definitely um, makes it diff difficult to keep them in sync. Uh, basically meaning that I I'll probably never have a good way of doing that unless there is some sort of automated way to sync between the two of those things. And I don't want to, I don't want to worry about that, but yeah, it's too much, which is where podcasting is kind of this unique space, I guess, too, where it's a collaborative environment, but often I know with like the at YouTube podcast, I do, we have a Google doc that we use for collaborating on like each episode gets its own Google doc. Um, but I don't like to write in there what I'm going to be saying about Bono's pants or whatever. Right, you want to, yeah, you want to keep it kind of secret, sort of. And then, but there are other folks who on the, on that podcast who just like, you know, verbal diarrhea dump of like everything they plan to say or hope to say, or might even say, or just like a list of every article ever written about, you know, the topic. And so then, which is perfectly fine. That's their style of doing it. And there's nothing wrong with that per se, but it does kind of mess with me. Like when we're recording, cause then you're like, okay, are you going to say that now? Cause it's right here in front of me and we can yeah. all see it yeah. and vice versa. And so it is that kind of weird space where even for like you and I create working on this thing, this episode, you know, I'm putting my stuff somewhere else, not in there. Cause I don't necessarily want you to see what I'm going to say or whatever. I don't know. No, no. It's a weird, weird world we live in. Yes. It, it doesn't leave enough room, I think, for us to have a conversation about how we get things done or maybe leave enough room to see where the conversation goes in the episode. I know at least... Uh, for you and I, I'm, I have no idea. I don't know where this episode is going to go, but I know for a show like Morning Show, where we may spend 15 minutes on why there is a place that makes pizzas in the shape of a cone, and I did not intend for that to happen at all. I thought it would be 35 seconds maximum, and then we would move on, and it didn't, it didn't work out that way. So I, I know you and I both have... Well, I saw your list, so then I made a list because if there's lists to be made, then I got to get in on that of apps and stuff that you've tried over the years to do this kind of stuff with. And I'm sure listeners out there have tried and are loving or hating a thing. And there'll be a link to maybe a subreddit or whatever that people can comment and leave their, their thoughts on, on all this kind of stuff. But um, maybe should we blast through sort of some of the, in, in bullet form, almost some of the various things you've tried over the years and, and some quick back and forth comments on some of them. Sure. Yeah. And I think where I should start with this is uh, yesterday was the day that I re-upped my Workflowy Pro subscription that I had been mm. kind of tossing around for a good 30 days or so. I, I had stopped paying for it. They usually will do it either per month or per year. I've been on the per year schedule for a while, but I wanted to give myself again Every year I, I do this to myself in a terrible way and I always end up back at Workflowy. But I wanted to take a look and make sure, am I, am I doing this the best way I can? Is this the most efficient way to do this? Is this the most cost-effective way to do this? And, and should I be reinvesting my time in using this tool? And eventually I did end up back at Workflowy just out of convenience and, and everything. But um, I should mention in the same breath, with Workflowy, the ones that seemed to be the best analogous uh, services that I did try were Task Paper, um, which seems to be a popular one on Mac. And I think Task Paper also has a, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to search here. 
I think yeah, they also too. have, yeah, they're, they're part of the set app thing, which is cool. Uh, so you get that for free if you're on set app, but uh, it looks like they're just in the Mac app store. So it is a Mac only thing, but it okay. creates, it creates task paper uh, files, which I guess can be used pretty much anywhere. They're, they're regular text files. Uh, Moo.do, Moo.do was one that uh, it, you can, is it in the, yeah, it's in there. It's under outliners. Um, it handles tasks, emails, projects, contacts, calendars, documents. It, it, it is a to-do list. It's everything. Um, oh, man. It's sort of the reordering style of Workflowy, but you can move things from your Gmail inbox into a Workflowy style outline. It's cool as heck, but almost tries to do too much for me. I, it, it was really intense uh, to try and wrap my brain around that, especially with all the, the you know, powerful uh, keystroke things that are in there. And you can do the, the same with Workflowy or import Workflowy. It's, it's neat, but probably too much. Not, not exactly what I needed. Um, you kind of have to go all in on Google as well as the thing, right? Like you're with this tool in particular. Yeah, you definitely do. Like Gmail, like, yeah, Gmail, or, Google calendar. Um, yeah. the, the integrations do work with multiple accounts. So if you wanted to do like a, a personal account and then a work account, um, that was a nice feature. The, the thing that was most important to me when looking into these tools was, is it something that I can access from the web? Uh, moo.do did check that box for me uh task paper didn't um yeah. i would need to look at that through some sort of like a dropbox web editor or something like that um workflow we did as well um and then the the other thing was having an android app for me since i'm on android uh the the moo app was okay wasn't great um it seems like it's built the same way that workflow's app is it's sort of just a, a web view that they load up and try to have it work. It's not great. So they, they felt pretty even on that, that front. So I went with the cheaper one. I went with workflow. Um, but this was, this was another one that I considered. Um, do you have any that, that you've if, seen um, that are kind of like this? What was it? I just saw it here somewhere. $7 a month or $69 a year. Right. Uh, whereas workflow is what? 40, 20? 49 a year or oh, 49 a year. five a month. Maybe. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, yeah not, I generally totally try sure. to, I've, uh, any of these kind of things, like this intrigues me right now and I'm already, I know I'll try it out because <laughs> I'm just like a, it's like um, crack or whatever for me, some of this kind of stuff. I'll try it out, sort of work through a test project in my head, like on it and sort of see, and then inevitably some, the biggest drawback to me is often I have to go all in on everything and then I get sort of scared at the idea of, <laughs> dumping everything into something and then not knowing where it's going to end up in a year or two. And so I get scared of changing, but yeah, especially with, you know, client workflow stuff, that's where there's only so many times clients will follow you from one thing to another. Not that this is necessarily something you take with clients or whatever, but um, the closest thing to, to this kind of idea of like to do's and, and notes and stuff that is more on the premium side on, on the web and stuff that I've tried in, in recent years is base camp, which is kind of a mm. big elephant in the room as it were of, uh, notes to do management, like all that kind of stuff. And, um, and there's some other ones too, some like Google, um, what are they called? Uh, Click. extensions, I guess for, for Chrome that I've, I know I've used over the years to trying and that sort of integrate your calendar and your Gmail. Ah, uh, okay. And like, you know, it's kind of like what this is doing a bit of right. where it's kind of just an overlay that pulls all your data out of the stuff and then tries to help you organize it. Um, well, part of, but. part of what Basecamp does too, that, that this does not do is have that collaborative uh, calendar, collaborative tasks, assigning tasks. It's definitely not a tool that, that allows you to do that with multiple people. Um, yeah. But, but Moo, I don't know. It, it was, it was, like you said, something that you either need to go all in. This is a task manager for everything. And you either need to put everything in there and use it for everything um, and not go to any other tools or or don't use it, I guess. Then that, that's I, I landed on the latter only because I, like you, am just super deep in Todoist. And I can't shake the way that Todoist handles its tasks. So 
Yeah, I, w- I wasn't gonna, especially my karma number, man. I'm, I'm not, I'm not letting that go. <laughs> Come on. All right. So the uh, well, to doist is like strictly to do stuff, right. right? Like that's not really note taking or. You could, I guess, use it a bit that way. I've sometimes done that with a bit with like a to-do item. I'll have like, I'll put say like for Sue and I, we keep our bills and stuff in, in Todoist. I just use it. She doesn't actually use it for that, but she can glance at it and make sure that, you know, I have, I've been checking off paying bills or whatever. Yeah. And I'll sometimes put a copy of our bill as a comment on there in the PDF form or whatever, so that she can see a MasterCard bill or whatever. But, um, but in general, yeah, it's kind of just a thing that I use solo for the most part. Um, but it, it is like, it's the one that's stuck for me over the, I've tried other to do apps and that's the one that sticks. The iOS app is great. Uh, it lacks Siri integration. As far as I can tell, I've never really tried it too much. That's the one sort of thing that keeps me using reminders, the app on iPhone for groceries and stuff. It's just the ability to say, add uh Dasani fruit juice or whatever to my Costco <laughs> list and it's just done. <laughs> but I can't, I can't recommend circle. it. Can't recommend it. I, right. I would take that off right now. Take it off. <laughs> Siri. Yeah. Hey Siri. Remove it. Sorry, anybody. Um yeah. So the going back to notes though, I think um over the years, like I've settled on the Apple Notes as sort of the default one that okay. I'm using now with uh iOS and Mac as the place I'll just the my first sort of like reaction to go to is, is that, cause I know that it syncs really well between everything, all my devices that I use, it'll be there. If I can't find it anywhere else, that's kind of like w- where I would put something. I have conversations with clients that I've kept notes on. I've had, um, just times when our kids have been sick or whatever, need to remember <laughs> temperatures and medicine instructions or whatever, that kind of stuff. Some podcast ideas. It's kind of, uh, I have one note that's just for like drafts of tweets that I might want to send out someday. Um, researching buying a TV or, or not that kind of thing would go into notes. That's kind of where it all goes because primarily over the last, I don't know, last, the current version of Mac OS, iOS, and then the last versions of each respectively, the share sheet idea of being able to dump something to a particular note improved drastically to the point where it makes it super easy wherever you are on something on either dev- like your Mac or your iPhone or iPad, if you have one, um, to just send it right to a note. And that part is where it really clicked for my brain, I guess, in terms of research gathering, kind of like what you, we joked about Evernote before, but like a place to dump all the stuff. Mm-hmm. It's not where I, you can do to do's in it and stuff like that, but I don't use it for that. I have a few collaborative notes with Sue, like my wife, where we keep stuff, um, that we both sort of access a bit of gift ideas for kids and stuff like that. But, um, for the most part, it's a solo venture into notes, I guess, but, uh, it's one for me that's stuck. Um, so it's kind of like what your go-to place for cataloging something when you're either on the go, um, you, you have an idea, you have, uh, a piece of information that you need to capture right now and save for later. It does the, do you utilize like the rich text stuff? Like you would put a photograph in there or you would put something that is not just text. Yeah, that's where like particularly say the TV research one is like, so I have our current set up a photo of it just so I remember what it looks like along with the measurements. And then, you know, if I'm out somewhere and looking at stuff, like I figure out spatially what could fit or, or not mm. how big a TV or small we need to get or whatever. Um, I don't do that. I do it a little bit for like keeping ideas of gift ideas for, for family or whatever with, by taking a photo of something somewhere. Although the Amazon app is so good at just taking a photo in a store or whatever and adding it to a wish list, you know, a private one or whatever for somebody. It's kind of what I generally go to for that. But yeah, I like bolding and italics and links and yeah, uh, all that kind of stuff I use inside of notes to, uh, to keep track of, of stuff that I need to remember. And, and when I don't want to have to think about where I should, I keep it, I dump it into notes, I guess too. Right. Cause that's often all, if you're like me anyways, you spend five minutes thinking, well, should this be in Todoist? Should it be in that ByWord app I have or a document I have or should it be? Is it, is it partially like it, where am I going to remind myself that this exists later? Because I, I think for the most yeah. part, I, something that I know I need to come back to, um, I have learned to go to Todoist most of the time for that. If it's something that um, I will serendipitously maybe come across later and and think like, oh yeah, I have I have this in here, or I need to access this purposefully. I'll go into my notes, or I'll go into workflow for that. But if it's something that um, I will otherwise miss, I know it needs to go into Todoist. It's I don't right. I don't think I check my notes 
enough for for that to be like a a good enough place to to remind myself for it are you do you know what i mean yeah yeah to do if it's a thing i have to do and if i don't do i'm in trouble or yeah. you know, something along those lines yes. that's where it has to go into doist and that's where i know in in prepping for this we we're kind of like is it about notes or is it about to do apps and it kind of blurs together cuz the two worlds kind of collide in weird ways depending on what kind of app you're using. Right. right. Well, especially with something like, uh, let's see, task paper. We've talked about uh, folding text sort of works that way as well. It's one of those like infinite yeah. list type things uh, by the same people, I believe, who make task paper. Um, but you can do you can do folding text through uh, either the folding text app or you could use uh, the folding text plugin for Atom uh, or a, a service like that or a, an app like that. Um, it works kind of the same way that workflow does where you can reorder stuff and you can dive deeper into a particular bullet point. Um, but it is also kind of like a list of tasks, anything bulleted sort of inherently has that task like feel to it. So unless I'm going to know that that is where my tasks are and that's all I'm going to use it for, I can't blur the two together for some reason like to do's anything that is something that I need to come back to is a to do anything that I am cataloging just to have it or be searchable for later is a note. And that ends up either in workflowy or I don't know, in my camera roll, my camera roll, honestly, maybe my camera rolls the best note taking <laughs> software that I have because it takes real world things and just keeps them for me. Right. So you just, do you, put them in an album or it's just kind of like mixed in with no, pictures of no it's it, it, cats, yeah most mostly cat. it's it, it is the invisible cats and then of a, a photograph of a receipt for taking the train <laughs> in the morning that's right. kind of that is the gist of of my google photos um it is just so, blurred but google, so where, where do sorry i'll just where do things like where does your someday maybe in in the gtd parlance i guess but like where do things that like you someday might want to do or someday might want to i guess buy probably ends up on an amazon list or whatever but um like an idea for a podcast that you have let's mm -hmm. say or an idea for a website you want to build where do you do you just leave that in your brain and hope you remember it if it's good enough or do you actually throw those things somewhere no they'll they'll typically go into a uh, bullet point on a workflow document um, mainly because I guess I expect myself to utilize the tool so much so that there is an eventuality where I see that note again and I'm reminded of it and can reconsider whether or not this is a time that I can, I can do it. I guess the same can be said for something like a someday list on a, on Todoist. And I do use that as well. But, it, but if it's yeah. but if it's something that I need to be more more uh, explain, I need to explain a little more. I need to write down more thoughts or I have had more thoughts. Um, it does end up in in workflow. So I, right. I, I don't know, I guess I guess it's under the assumption that eventually I'm going to see this sometime, maybe. And when I do come back to it, that's an acceptable time for me to take care of whatever that thing is like Chris, Christmas gifts and stuff like that. Those end up in workflowy as a, a little bullet uh, podcast ideas as your example. Those, those definitely end up in there. Um, yeah. That's, right. that's, that's sort of my someday list. Do you, do, you, do yours end up in the, uh, the Mac app for notes? A bits of that. And then also for anything that's like, um, I was going to say computer related, but like, like the sort of, big bucket of podcasts and website ideas, blog post ideas, anything like that, that I, I sort of often I find get stuck in my brain. And if I don't write them down, then I sort of stress about forgetting them, even if they're terrible ideas. That's where I use, um, jumping to something else called Trello, which Trello, I really want to like, and it, it's kind of like, a if you've never used it, um, you look at it and it's kind of intimidating and weird. And there's sort of like a master list with cards on it and you, and then each card can have more details in it. And each card is either maybe an item or maybe it's a big project or maybe it's, and you, you're kind of left to your own devices with it a bit, which is probably where it breaks down for me. And I get stressed <laughs> using it sometimes, but, but I have like a massive list. If I look at it of Trello, um, boards, I think they're called. And, but one of those is what I call just a blog or podcast list. And so I have a uh, list 
for personal blog ideas. I have podcast topic ideas. I have uh, my Lemon Productions, my business blog ideas, and my Lemon Productions potential podcast ideas. Screencast is another list of topic ideas and webinar courses, video game. Anyways, a bunch of sort of lists within there. And I just dump stuff in there. I don't think about whether it's good or bad, throw it in there. And then if I'm ever like, what should I do now? Or I'm hunting for a, a blog idea or something to talk about. I'm an on dailyish, then I can, and I can't think of anything else that I can go there. Um, it actually works really well generally with some clients going back to like what I use with clients mm-hmm. It actually for certain clients, it works really well because they can see exactly what's going on. We keep a conversation going about a particular topic of, you know, adding this page, what should be on it, what color should the logo be or whatever. Um, and it kind of keeps, but inevitably most clients, uh, and most, well, most people sort of fall back onto email because it's just simpler than trying to find what that stupid thing was that Chris made me want to you know, sign up for uh, the Trello thing or whatever. Mm-hmm. They'll just default back to email. So then I'm left copying email conversations into Trello to keep it track of it. And then I just, I give up too. So, um, so it kind of, it kind of injects a little bit of process too, for you, right? Where your brain has that space where you can put, use an inbox basically and, and dump a bunch of ideas and keep all of them not hierarchically organized and then have right. it pass through some sort of uh, Kanban style workflow that you've d- uh, created on on Trello, um, yeah. and get it from the this is an idea phase to okay something's completed and I can either archive it, and put it over here, give a status update to a client, um, make sure that they know that this is finished, you know that kind of thing, or pass it over to somebody else and assign it to somebody else. Um, yeah, I, th- I think that that makes a lot of sense. Another tool I've seen that works that way the same way that trello kind of does and and also i think suffers a little bit from the blank canvas syndrome of like i don't know how to use this tool uh, w- you know what am i supposed to use it for how do i like give me an example um is the notion.so have you seen i, I think we've yeah. used this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i think this is something that we've we've tried to use for good uh, good stuff before but yeah, they i use it uh i'll just say i used it with um Chris, my brother-in-law on a, it wasn't a podcast, but a business idea that we sort of worked through and it actually worked really well for that purpose. But again, it was like a single purpose app for me. Anyways, go ahead. Well, no, and it's, it's exactly that. It's, it's great for, I think, working between people, uh, trying to work collaboratively on something, using sort of a, a note style, wiki style database for everything that you need to know about a particular thing. Um, but it also has the the Kanban style sprint task board type things. Um, it's it's sort of suffering from the same thing that Moo.do is, where it doesn't know what it is, but it's sort of like, hey, if you want to use yeah, this, everything. it can do everything that you want it to do, which is great yeah. for some people. I just I I need a more targeted approach on what do you expect me to put in here? Oh, it's just text. OK, I get that. Yeah. I, I understand that. I think the same can be said for pretty much all the markdown tools. I'll put these in the show notes, but pretty much every markdown tool that I've outlined, it it knows what it does and it does that thing moderately well. All you're doing <laughs> is you're putting text into it. It's not trying to, and, and I think where those markdown uh, tools fail is where they try to differentiate from one another and not follow the GitHub flavored markdown or uh, do the regular markdown stuff where they try and get tricky with it. Like especially uh, Dropbox paper where yes, you can put some, some markdown uh, symbols in there and it'll do the stuff with it. But if you try and export that, it doesn't, it does not look good at all. Try and do, right. I tried to do that for the show notes for, for morning show and it was bad. Great to work on it collaboratively and see where people are putting their cursors. But man, it's, Oh, I, I can't, I cannot stand that product at all. Which that's always where those kind of things break down. Like if you, as soon as you try and export and same thing is true of like backing up your data and all that kind of stuff. Like if you're trying to copy it out of there and you can't easily get it out to do it, move it somewhere else, then it's frustrating to me because it's, I don't want to put a bunch of work into a particular system, keeping track of stuff and then have it be locked kind of in there. And that's where going way back to what I first started doing was actually, uh, going back to like Merlin man days of, uh, whatever, uh, what was his site? 43 folders, 43 folders. Yeah. But like a text of Dropbox folder in my case of text files. And that's, I still do that to a certain point, uh, with phone conversations with clients where I have envy alt, which is an app that kind of just 
is like a, almost like a file browser for text files. And it just allows you to just quickly fire it up, start a new document and start keeping tracking notes, which is great for when a client calls me and I just need to quickly start recording something. And even Apple notes feels clunky to start up and, and get using. Whereas uh, something like NV alt, it goes really quick and, and, uh, and it's very searchable as well. Um, but doesn't have any of the rich tech stuff that notes does. So, right. But you, um, you also know at that point, you know what you can get out of that type of application. Exactly. It's just yeah. text output. It's not trying to reinterpret your, uh, your stuff as like, okay, this is a link. So let's not take the actual link text. Let's convert that to a rich text link and then let's copy it over. It's not trying to do any of that. I think the same can be said for workflow. For me, at least I know what I'm getting out of it. When I go to the export button, it's just going to, it's either going to give me the rich text version, or I can click over and hit the plain text version. And that's it. It does, unfortunately it doesn't have any sort of sharing extensions or any way to get stuff into that application, even on right. iOS or, or uh, Android. But it just sort of, it, it is the thing that works the way that it says it works um, and is not trying to do anything clever. And I, I don't know, maybe that's just what works for me. Not trying to be clever, really straightforward in a place that I know that what I need will be there and yeah. being reliable and being available on all the devices that I need your point of like having just a folder with text files. I tried that and I, I think that is a totally viable solution and something that I could probably stick to pretty well, but not being able to accurately search the entire folder for one particular phrase and, and get a return that is, easily parsable so if i wanted to say like oh, i need to know everything with uh that i any meeting that i've ever had with chris um hopefully i haven't changed the way that i've labeled you in my notes over the last three years um and can just search the word chris or haven't worked with more than one chris right. at a time um there's no hint of that when i'm working in a, a flat text file it doesn't doesn't have any hints on what I've called you before. Did I say Chris or did I say Chris ends with no space or did I say Chris ends with two words? Um, yeah. I, I need those hints to be able to tell like what I'm searching for is actually going to return the documents that I expect it to return. So I, I think that's where I've, I'm landing on it. Um, are you looking for a new tool? Are you sticking with what you've got right now? What, what, what has a, this? I'm exploring my options, okay. I guess. All right, so all right, I like to play the field. You're, a little. Seeing, you're seeing other, you're seeing other note apps. I see. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's good. <laughs> Some midlife yeah. note app <laughs> crisis of sorts. No, I think what I was going to say is that in, in summation, almost for a lot of what both you and I tend to do, and I think for listeners out there, maybe who are kind of like, where do I begin with any of this kind of stuff? If you don't know, and you're just kind of default to like so many people I, I interact with, and you probably see this too, they use Apple notes because it's there, Right. And that's the place, like my parents, they both keep every single password in a note on, on their phone. Don't steal their phones. Um, and just because it's there, like they don't give any second thought to using another one. And anytime I've been like, hey, dad, you should check out Byword or whatever it is over the years. It doesn't stick for him because it's not the default one that's just there whenever he updates his phone or whatever. And it syncs easily to the Mac and all that kind of stuff. Um, the one that I've been kind of in the strictly in the note taking side of things that I've been really drawn to, but just haven't been able to commit to the idea of using totally is one called bear and it's just for iOS and Mac. So sorry, Android, uh, windows folks, uh, this leaves you out, but it's, uh, it would be similar to other note taking apps. It's nothing too fancy. It does support markdown, uh, full markdown, uh, which is a language for writing notes and stuff, I guess we should say, but if we can Google it and maybe talk about another episode, but, um, and it's, it's just one of the nicest looking apps that I've used on the, uh, on the iPhone for sure. And the way that I kind of have been just experimenting with it, it's the one that's stuck the longest as an experiment is just using it strictly for keep, keeping notes of things that I want to try, um, try that I don't care about if I would lose, I guess is the easiest way of saying it. Um, and if you because the way it works is the notes you keep, you write on your phone are stuck to your phone. The notes you write on the app for the Mac are stuck to your Mac, unless you pay their, uh, it's only $15 a year. So it's not that much, but it's just for a note taking app. So I haven't re been ready to commit yet. Then you can enable syncing between the devices and, uh, and then your notes would obviously be in sync. The, 
the one really cool feature that they have, and I'm sure other apps have something like this too, but is with within their tagging system. So a lot of notes have or apps have tagging. You can have sub tags, which is isn't that revolutionary, I guess, but it kind of clicks for me where I can have, a, say, a location or a client name or whatever, or a company, and then maybe so that would be you know hashtag and then the company name lemon, let's say, and then slash you put a slash in there, and then you put Chris or slash. Kyle or slash whatever. And both, both of those are then searchable and sortable by each of those tags or the sub tags. So it kind of creates a nice hierarchical system of, of notes that can live in a few different places. You can have, and anywhere in your text that you're writing, you can put a, a hashtag essentially, which is a, a tag. And that, so then it doesn't matter if you, you don't have to always do it right, right at the top in like the tag section, the tag field for that note, you just throw a hashtag in somewhere and then that automatically gets tagged in that group or included in that group of tags. Right. So, um, yeah. And it's, it is like, a there's something about it that feels, uh, nicer than Apple notes. It uh, it just, well, looks nicer. It's not that bright yellow kind of note paper look to it and supports theming and stuff like that. Anyways, I don't want to spend too long but on it cause I haven't really committed to it, but it's one, it's one of those things that you're, you're right. It, like is a different way of organizing your notes that you're not really used to notes on the Mac and on, on iOS is sort of like a folder based system, correct? For organizing notes. Right. Yeah. So this would be kind of, it'd be flat. It would be almost like the workflow model where you've got sort of all the notes that you have ever made. They're searchable by tag. If you don't use tags, I guess you're sort of SOL, but yeah. using tags here you're right it's kind of like okay they a, a good example here is recipes and then under recipes they have cakes and pasta so if you searched for pasta you would get recipes for pasta but if you search for recipes you would get cakes and pasta so it's it seems to be sort of the the same mental model that i've got for for the way that i organize my notes um with a little bit of folder structure i guess thrown in there as well do they do they support folders in bear I think, well, they basically use the tags as folders, if I'm not mistaken. Like, it's kind of like that becomes a folder. So you can kind of put, I guess you can put the notes wherever you want it and then just use yeah. use Bear as the tool that then searches through all those tags and sort of tries to give you a different organization, a different way to uh, relate one note to another note. And it's kind of the, like, it's definitely the one of the sort of hot, apps these days in, in some of the, hmm. you know, mm-hmm. amongst Mac, Mac nerds, especially or whatever. Um, and so there's a bit of like a uh, power user envy or whatever, when I see other people using it and I think, oh, I should be using that because that would improve my life so drastically over using Apple notes when in reality it's like, it complicates things because then I have to remember to tag things and I know I'll forget. And then it'll like stress me out about that. I didn't tag something and, um, I'll spend half an hour going through tagging things that I'll never you never actually end up looking through those tags anyways, but yeah, but, but the, it still is like, yeah, the power user angle of it. That's, it is kind of like if Apple notes isn't quite enough for you, then maybe check out something like bear is sort of my summary review. Got so it. far. I would say, you know, if the tool doesn't guide you to find better ways to use it, the way that works for you, if you have to like separately develop a system for how you want to manage your notes and your tasks and everything through a tool before you can even use the tool, that's too, for me, too much barrier to entry. I need to be able to kind of, like you said, throw some stuff in there that doesn't matter, explore it, try and see what features you like, what you don't like, what's what makes sense to you with the way that your brain works um, and then use it in a, I guess, mildly customized way to get the most out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know if we have a, a summation. <laughs> what's the point of this episode? <laughs> where, I, where are we going? You know, good, good question. I would say <laughs> uh, this is mostly just like a, a checkup for, for you and me on yeah. where we are right now uh, in, in the world of note taking and collaborative note taking and uh, categorizing our lives into text files that maybe someday we'll go back and look at, maybe not, but I, I I think the point is to have this just be a, a a point in time that we can look back on and say, yeah, we we tried that out a year ago, and 
boy, am I doing something completely different now? Um, yeah. And and maybe get some feedback on on what other listeners are doing we've got a, a stuffy slack that we have for patreon subscribers uh, to shows that are on good stuff where some of this conversation uh, happens in our workflow channel which is pretty great uh, I, I like seeing what other folks are doing uh, using different mail apps what's the hot new thing uh, for you know taskbar apps these days uh, so if you'd like to you can join in there either by supporting uh chris on patreon i patreon.com slash i chris yeah that's a question question don't put a question mark at the end because that's more (laughs) i think that will take you somewhere else it's a different character that you should not be putting on there so no question it is patreon.com slash i chris um i'll plug i'll plug you for you uh or you can also support the the three guys three questions patreon page uh patreon.com slash three three j's three q's three q's Goodstuff.fm slash support will show you. Hey, there you go. How you can go to the Patreon stuff, and then also there's things like links to the workflowy stuff that we get massive kickbacks from. Huge, huge, gigantic kickbacks. You yeah. know, I should really f- we should get a referral link to someone who does not have a paid account because that gets me no perks. I can see I can see the number of people who have signed up, not who has signed up, and it doesn't get me any free storage, but it does get you free storage. So if you sign up with our link over oh, at go. Goodstuff.fm slash support, uh, yeah, you'll get. You'll get some extra, extra little bullets to put your brain in there. Nice. So this, this podcast, this is an experimental version. If you're hearing this uh, experimental episode of this podcast, I guess if you're hearing it, it's probably not an experiment. We've gone full, <laughs> at least far enough to publish it somewhere. <laughs> and uh, we will, we endeavor, I think, to be like Kyle said, a conversation between Kyle and I about life, about good stuff, about and then about a topic, a more niche topic f- within that. Those two, I guess, and in this case happened to be notes. It won't always be sort of uh, workflow related type stuff as much as this maybe sounded like a very familiar kind of topic, um, but in especially in Mac podcast circles, but it probably will have something to do tech related anyways. But, you know, things, topics, ideas like kitchen tools, budgeting, streaming media, managing your Wi-Fi at home, what, how you, which music services you're using. And Kyle and I are, I mean, two white dudes on the internet, which I think you can't get any more different than that <laughs> really. Right. We're really diverse. Uh, we're, we're definitely we're, representative of the diversity of the internet. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> we're vast. Our, our two worlds are vastly underrepresented. That's, that's internet, right. Especially in podcasts. Yes. So, um, but yeah, we'll, all that aside, we will, we, we do this podcast network at goodstuff.fm. We don't get enough chances to just chat and chew the fat. Yeah. The gristle. I think that's the, that's, that's the good part. If you've barbecued it enough, it's not that dry and it just melts. It's good. So hopefully we've decided on a name by the time you're listening to this, um, something better than the gristle. Yeah. We, (laughs) we hope we melt in your mouth. Maybe that, maybe we can go with that tagline at the end. Just right, right there. <laughs> so, uh, Kyle, if they want to send us, send you, I guess let's, yeah, you, you, let's say let's, me, where uh, is I, you? I am, I am dog burps on Twitter. Um, where I will typically just write things about beer and, uh, task management software. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> and I'm I Chris on Twitter and then, uh, good stuff or twitter.com slash good stuff. FM is the, Twitter account for the network. And uh, like Kyle said, listen to the morning show. That's his show. Listen to dailyish. That's my show. Listen to a whole bunch of other shows at goodstuff.fm. And uh, I guess with nothing else to say, thanks for listening. Bye.